Hey, what's going on guys? It's Ryan Darwin Design here. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make vintage type t-shirt designs. Um, I've been seeing this kind of stuff blow up a lot lately, so I just wanted to give it a go myself. Uh, I'm going to have the PSD in the uh, description below so you guys can download it and play with it yourselves. Um, I'm going to kind of go over the PSD a little bit and then I, uh, I have this here. I'm going to kind of recreate it really quick so you guys can get a better idea of how to like use it yourselves. So. Uh, the PSD is really simple, so it's just three groups. I got the base layer, which is just the black background. Uh, this is basically all the artwork, and then this is just a white border I made. That's just the dimensions I wanted to use. You can use whichever ones you want, uh, which, whichever ones you see best fit for t-shirts and stuff like that. So um, basically, there's just masks back here, uh, as you can see. It's just these back here, um, which are the background piece. This is the front. I put a black and white adjustment and a gradient on them to blend with the text up top, which this is just blending options um, right here. So text, in my opinion, with these type of shirts is really like where you can kind of set yourself apart um, with the different textiles and stuff like that. So this is just some some work I did in uh, in like blending options, um, I would really highly recommend, you know, experimenting and doing your own thing of like, you want to create your own stuff like this, uh, try and maybe find like a unique style or something, or just something that's, that kind of separates you uh, from the other designs and stuff. Uh, and there's a little blur layer, but that's it. Like it's a really simple design. So I'm going to recreate it as well. So you can get a better idea as to how to use it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So, um, first thing I'm going to do is skin them. So skin the pictures. So I'm going to do that using Topaz. So go to filter Topaz and Topaz adjust. I'll have a link to the uh, uh, Topaz in the description down below. It is the legacy version. Um, so keep that in mind. Topaz adjust legacy version. I'll have a download link in the description and the settings I use are under the stylized collection. I like to use vivacious and I down the trans or lower the transparency a little bit to like halfway. Like that's good to me. To help make the picture pop a little bit more, uh, throw some psychedelic on there and then click apply. Um, if you want to keep applying more effects and then if you're done, you can hit OK. I'm going to classic collection. I'll throw some photo pop on there and then I'm going to throw a little bit of exposure correction, just a little bit and then I'll press OK because I'm done. So you can see it just helps it pop a little bit and it's dark because it's underneath the layer mask but i'm gonna go ahead and skin all the photos and then i will be back and there we go so this is the first one and then i just skinned this one as well and then this is the main cutout so for skinning um honestly using topaz like it's really important, I think, to experiment with this stuff and kind of find like your own skin. Like the one I just used, uh, that's kind of what I use for most of my stuff. But skinning is like where you can kind of separate yourself from others and doing like skin treatment and stuff like that. Um, and you don't need Topaz either. You can do it in Camera Raw. So you can go to Filter, Camera Raw, Filter. And it'll open up this stuff here. Um, you can play with this stuff like exposure, contrast. Highlight shadows, texture and clarity are two big ones for skinning to help kind of make it pop a little bit, as you can see. Um, and you can press OK. But um, I'll take it down. It's just a little bit grainy. But uh, yeah, man, just experiment with all that. Um, making like the picture pop is really important to helping it kind of stand out and not look so flat. So um, and then you can also use them together like Topaz and Camera Raw. That's what I generally use. But Topaz is definitely like what I the main thing I use to help make the picture pop. So once you get your picture skinned, you're going to want to cut out the uh, images. So for the background, I can see for the first one, what I did here is um, so I had my main cut out, right? This is just the picture and then it's the background of it. And I stamped it over to the right and then just uh, put the uh, right mask on top. So they share the same background um, and it kind of fills the space in the back a little bit. So I'm going to do the same on the second design here. So what I'll do for that is I'll use this picture here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to stamp it. So to do that, I'm going to take this tool here, the, the rectangular marquee tool, and you can right click and press fill and then click on content aware and it'll kind of stamp the, uh, there you go. As you can see here, it kind of fills in that space. So 
um, the uh, the fade with the gradient and the layer mask would look a little bit more smooth and this kind of looks you know more natural so uh, that's what I have here and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut out this image here um, so I can put it on top and I'll do that using select subject and a little bit of uh, lasso polygonal stuff like that you could use pen tool which I would recommend but just for time's sake I'm used to like subject everyone has their own kind of way to cut out an image you know so like quick selection some use this some use that whatever so whatever you're comfortable with just make sure it's a good cutout um, you don't want anything sloppy so I'm gonna speed this part up and that should be it so if you're curious as to what i did there uh, i did select subject which basically will just do a rough outline of the image and then i got the polygonal lasso tool and so this here with the square in the back that's full and the one in front that's just like the outline that's to subtract so you see this is my outline here and so if i want to take something out let's say i wanted to kind of trim this up a little bit make it more flat i could do that and it'll subtract from the selection and then if I do the two squares, it'll add to it so I can add it back like that. And so uh, select subject won't do a perfect job. It'll do pretty good. Uh, so I take this tool and just kind of clean up a little bit. Um, but to be honest, if you just use pen tool or quick selection, none of that matters. So it's really all, all up to you on how you want to cut out your image. I just did this for time's sake. I'm trying to keep it quick. So um, once you have your cutout here. You can see you want them to be the same size so i put a uh, guide here uh, so it also lines up with the uh, text so i'll put this one on the right side and then i'll have this one on the uh, on the left and i'm going to cut out this uh, image as well because i want to blur the background so i'll do that as well and speed it up So now that we have our cutout here, I'm going to go ahead and blur the background. Um, so I'm going to go to filter, blur, gaijin blur, and just blur it just a little bit. Three, four, I'll, I'll do four. Um, and then I'll put the other one on the other side. And I want to balance them out a little bit. But to be honest, it also depends on your main image here. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this one out as well. And I really want to put emphasis on, I, I want you guys to take time with your cutouts. Um, if you have a sloppy cutout, it's just kind of rough around the edges or whatever. Uh, that's it just kind of this looks low effort um, so um, you know I mean take the take time with the pen tool or whatever just to make sure you have a crisp cut out because um, it'll, it'll go a long way so I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the main one and then I'll be back and boom there we go all right so now we have our main cut out and we have our ones to the side so this will be a good way and i'll put the black and white and gradient maps back on um basically what this is here so the black and white i just got from the adjustments panel and the gradient i also got from the adjustments panel and i put it on a gray to dark uh or a green to like a darker gray gradient and you can see how it shows up different based on the value i i uh put on the opposite side of the green so you can play with that to your liking um, i like this here because you get a little bit of both shadows and darks but the darks kind of pop nicely so um, now that you have your main cutout you can position the back ones better so make sure when you're moving the front mask um, to move the background layer with it as well like so and then i'll move the one to the left or to the right a little bit there you go and as you can see here uh up top the um the fill we did earlier is cutting off so just repeat the same steps get the marquee tool and fill content aware fill and good as new so we have that here it's honestly it feels a little bit unbalanced so i'm gonna straighten it out and that's better so that's that and i'll throw the text layer on and it's basically where i'm at so uh that's what i had there and then i had a on the other one i had a uh little black and white layer on it here and i threw it on soft light to help make it pop a little bit so i'll lower the opacity and fill and i'm going to use a layer mask to brush in which basically means it's just you can kind of change what shows up and what doesn't or if it's affected more in certain areas stuff like that so 
to do that you can click this button here and then use the brush to brush in uh, where you want it to show up at so uh, i'm gonna lessen it a little bit a little too dark on the face and good so that's where we're at now i'm gonna do this green blur as well so for this i'm just gonna copy this mask here convert it to a smart object and then go to rasterize it and go to filter blur motion blur i'm gonna blur a lot like 500 or so like that's good and then i'm gonna go to blending options uh color overlay put it on color and try and find the eagles green like that's that's good for me and then i'm gonna go ahead and convert it to a smart object and there you go so this is what the that's how I basically got that blur. I'll just copy the layer style. It's on color dodge with lower opacity. And you can use the layer mask here as well to brush it in how you want it to show up. So it just brings in a little bit more of that green. Um, so it ties it in with the background because the background is heavily green. So, all right, that's cool there. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. And the one thing I forgot to do is use a layer mask to brush out the uh, top part. So it fades out um, by that. I mean the back mask here. So with this, I'm going to go ahead and take a layer mask again and brush it out like that. Actually, to be honest, I could So yeah, I'll brush it out like that. You want it to be black, like fully black. Uh, so it, it blends because if you remove the border, you can see it's still a little bit there and you kind of want it to fade out on the shirt. So um, I mean, to be honest, it's all, it's all up to you. So do as you please. I'm going to go a little bit soft around the edges here. But yeah, man, do it to your liking. Uh, whatever you think looks good. It's cool with me. <laughs> it's, it's honestly, it's all up to you. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have this uh, PSD, as I mentioned, in the uh, description down below. So this is the original one I made. And then that's just a quick recreation. Um, and it's not too difficult. You can do it pretty quick, too. But um an important thing is don't just take these pictures off Google and start selling them. Make sure you know about copyright and trademark and all that or trademarking and um, don't get yourself into some unnecessary trouble trying to make a couple bucks. But I just saw uh, these things kind of blowing up, wanted to give it a go and uh, give you guys a tutorial to follow. And so you can recreate them for yourselves. So be smart with how you use them. Um, make sure you're all good on that side of things. And hopefully this helped you guys out. Um, if it did, please leave a like, comment down below. If you got any questions, you can reach out to me on my socials. They're always in the description. And the PSD will be in the description so you can play with yourself. So, so yeah, I appreciate you guys for watching. And I'm going to see you all in the next one. Peace out.